Coming up, searching for missing persons while battling pit bull stereotypes. Breaking the ice, this canine partner makes life easier. And hunting for birds with a Brittany Spaniel. <laughs> Dakota is a six-year-old pit bull. Children love her, and she just might save their lives one day. But not everyone can imagine pit bulls as loving, friendly pets. Generally, a pit bull reputation is bad, vicious, fighting, uh, aggressive. They, they got the locked jaw. I don't believe it's the dog's fault, it's the owner's fault. I wouldn't touch a pit bull I didn't know because I'd be afraid it would bite me. Dakota is a search and rescue dog trained to find missing persons by the scent they leave behind. Dakota's owner, Christine Crawford, is operations lieutenant for the Alameda County Sheriff's Volunteer Search and Rescue Unit. She thinks Dakota is ideal for the job. I prefer pit bulls for search and rescue because they're very athletic and agile dogs with their strength and their stamina. They can cover a large amount of area very quickly and efficiently. They're also very tenacious and courageous dogs. They're dogs that won't quit despite pain and exhaustion. And when someone's life is on the line, you want a dog that's not gonna quit. Pit bulls that attack somebody are not typical of the breed. For everyone you see that has attacked somebody, there's thousands of pit bulls in homes with children. Unlike trailing dogs, which follow a specific person's scent along the ground, Dakota is an air-scenting dog. She alerts to any human scent she detects in the air. Columbia, Houston, com check. Columbia, Houston, UHF, com check. When the Columbia shuttle disaster scattered debris over a large area of Texas, Dakota and Chris were chosen for the high-profile mission because of Dakota's perseverance. There was one time where one of the NASA astronauts came in from helping us search for the crew members. Uh, he was obviously very distraught. He walked into the tent, walked over to a chair in the back of the tent, and bent over and put his head in his hands. Dakota got up from her nice, warm, cozy spot in front of the heater, went over to him, put her head under his arms, and gave him a big kiss, and he just sat there and held her. Dakota shares her home with two other pit bulls Chris keeps as pets. Cheyenne, the smallest, helped rescue Dakota. People told me about a ranch that had pit bull puppies in. I took Cheyenne over and we went to look at him, and right when I got to the ranch, I could, the, the puppies were abused. I could see that it was not a place that I wanted to be, so I took Cheyenne and I'm like, come on, Cheyenne, let's go. And as I opened up the car dog, I noticed that Cheyenne had one of the puppies and she was putting it in the car. So Dakota, the search and rescue dog, was rescued herself. But not everyone appreciates the merits of a pit bull. People have thrown stones at Dakota and even tried to poison her. Once, she was attacked while training on a closed golf course. She was still wearing her search vest. I ran up and I said, what are you doing to my dog? And he said, all I saw was pit bull coming at me. That's why I hit her with my golf club. The American Pit Bull Terrier is the result of crossing bulldogs with terriers. It's famous for its tenacity and strength, which are unmatched in the canine world. A well-bred pit bull terrier is a good-natured, courageous, lively, and affectionate dog. Pit bull terriers have a high pain threshold and will happily put up with rough child play. As a search and rescue team, Dakota and Chris are always on call. An Alzheimer's patient has gone missing. As in any search, every minute counts. The Alzheimer's patient is an 80-year-old woman who could easily injure herself. So we're gonna start out at a strip mall that she's familiar with. They're thinking possibly maybe she wandered over there and then trying to find her way back, she got lost. There's no sign of the woman anywhere near the mall. So Chris and Dakota widen their search to this abandoned house. Dakota seeks out human scent in unlikely places. It's been four hours and still no sign of the Alzheimer's patient. Oh, yeah. 
units be advised, Alzheimer's patient is diabetic, has not had their medicine, and is considered high risk. Doc team four, copy that. Come on, Dakota. To search this aqueduct, Dakota needs to rappel down more than 10 feet. Chris's colleague lends a hand. Dakota isn't behind the idea 100%. I got you, Dakota. But with a little coaxing, Dakota pulls it off. It's been over six hours and there's still no sign of the missing woman. When we finish searching all the other areas, we're gonna search in some of the drainages and under the wooded areas here, and I'm uh, hoping Dakota will catch her scent so we can find her soon. But Dakota still hasn't caught any human scent. We've been out here for several hours. It's starting to get dark, so the temperature's dropping, so it's gonna start getting really cold. So we're worried about exposure with her. She also hasn't eaten all day. She hasn't taken her medication, so it's starting to get to be a pretty dangerous situation for her. It's been eight hours, when suddenly, Dakota catches a scent. Are you Ruby? Yes. Search base, this is dog team four. We've located the subject. This was just a, a mock search, but the mock search is instrumental in the training of the search dogs, and that way we can determine how the dogs are going to do in different types of terrain and, and weather conditions. She's pretty much instrumental in me overcoming any of my personal obstacles. That's why I've trained her to be a search and rescue dog so she can aid in the survival of others. And it's another way I can spread a small taste of the wealth that she's given my life. in one of Britain's oldest cities, two young residents are about to start their busy day. Orca, a two-year-old golden retriever, is Cheryl Smith's canine partner. He's only been working with her for six months. Come, boy. Off. Good dog. Light switch. Good boy. He is like an extension of myself. <laughs> It's different than, say, taking help from a, a person because I know he's not doing it because he feels sorry for me and he's not doing it because he thinks I can't do it. He wants to do it. He really wants to please me. And that's why he does what he does. And I try and do the same things back for him. OK, let's go. It's a, a partnership. I love him to pieces. Cheryl's neurological condition makes walking painful and difficult. She has trouble gripping objects and is prone to falling when she's not in her wheelchair. Okay. He's still got a lot to learn. He's only a very young puppy. And we've only been together for six months, which is not much. We're still getting to know each other in a lot of ways. Orca responds to many different commands, and he's always ready to take on more tasks. Orca can do a lot of retrieving type commands. So bringing the mail or getting clothes out of the washing machine is relatively easy for him because he can keep on taking clothes out of the washing machine and it's repeated and he knows what he's doing. And the same with the post. He just brings the mail in whatever order he fancies, which is fair enough. Good dog, what a nice boy. Some commands are a little more difficult than others. I have eight remote controls, and although he knows what a control is, and they all look quite different to him, they look very similar. They're just a piece of plastic with a lot of buttons on. Okay, get the control. Bring it here. Come on. Oh, 
It's very hard for him to work it out. I'm sure he'd get it eventually. <laughs> That's it, get it. But not get today. Arca's decided he has better things to do. Arca has a thing for Cheryl's socks, too. Where'd you get those from? It used to annoy me when I first got him because I thought he was just pinching my socks. It's quite endearing, actually. It's just one of his little quirks. <laughs> As a fourth-year chemistry student, Cheryl has a busy schedule. Orca has to lie quietly at her feet during lectures and seminars. Orca's got it under control. He's learnt very quickly that we go into a class and I start to settle down and he takes his cue from me, so he starts to settle down and he just, he just goes to sleep. Paul Walton is Cheryl's chemistry professor. Professionally, there's nothing to hold Cheryl back. She'll have a perfectly good degree from a very good institution and um, I have no doubts that she'll she'll have a very good career in front of her. Um, I, I can only see Orca add into that career um, because of the dimension that he brings in both his personality and icebreaking, uh, but also getting employers to think about how, how they help people like Cheryl who have canine companions. Being a student is certainly different this year that I've had Orca. I was away for a year due to illness, and if I was feeling a little bit ill, then I maybe wouldn't get out of bed. But now I have sort of the extra impetus to get out of bed, because if I didn't, Orca would soon let me know about it. Golden Retrievers need plenty of exercise, so after class, Orca gets to play. I do need to make sure that he gets plenty of time to, to run off his energy, because Sitting down for an hour in a lecture can be tiring for me, but for him, it's got to be boring. <laughs> Orca is nearly two years old, which means he's really still a puppy. He's sort of about 17, I think. He's a bit of an adolescent. So I think it is a bit difficult for him because he's still got that sort of silly, playful attitude. And uh, he's so happy to just play a game rolling around on the grass. He loves to play, and I, I hope he never loses that. That's a really nice thing to have. He's very playful. Playful, yes, but always with an eye on Cheryl. Orca once saved her life. It happened last spring, when Orca had been Cheryl's companion for just a few weeks. I was taking uh, Orca for a walk one morning, and uh, there weren't many people about, but I was about halfway round the circular route which goes past the farmer's field along the side of a deep ditch. There's no fence along the ditch and there's a lot of weeds growing so you can't really tell where the edge is. And one of the wheels of my wheelchair hit a, a branch and before I knew what was happening I was at the bottom of the ditch and I couldn't move at all. Orca was sort of sniffing around whining because he didn't know what to do and at first he wouldn't leave but after a bit of encouragement I managed to get him to, to, to go away. Although I knew he had the intelligence to do what I was asking, I'd only had him for six weeks and I thought that was really a lot to ask so I didn't think that he'd be able to do it. He managed to attract the attention of a jogger who he, he sort of lured back to where I was and, and this man Peter Harrison um, went and phoned the fire brigade and the fire brigade turned up and fished me out of the ditch and uh, reunited me with Orca. At first I was quite embarrassed because it was, you know, had to have all these uh, fire brigade and things come out for me but I didn't, don't think I realised until they told me just quite how serious it was. I can honestly say in the situation Cheryl was in and the condition with hypothermia, cuts and bruises, that without Orca's help, she may not have survived and she won't be here to tell the tale like she is today. The media reported Orca's life-saving feat and he was named one of England's top dogs of the year. He knows over 105 commands and he can definitely add saving my life to the list. He's a star. <laughs> A big part of university social life takes place in the pubs and clubs near campus. With Orca, Cheryl feels confident about going out on the town. I find Orca is a really good 
icebreaker. Um, people aren't afraid to look at me anymore because instead of seeing a woman in a wheelchair, now they just see a woman with a dog and the wheelchair doesn't even enter into their frame of mind. <laughs> he really does break down the barriers because he doesn't see me as a disabled person. He just sees me as me, which is really nice. It's quite new. Well, basically, I've, I've really got to know Cheryl since Orca's come, come on the scene because before Orca was there, Cheryl was, she had to stay at home. And since Orca's come on, she's been out. Orca has helped Cheryl an awful lot in the sense that he's become her friend as well. And I think the more I see them together, the more I see the friendship growing. So it's something that evolves over time. So it's not just a girl who has a dog. It's a girl who has a friend. It's been a full day for Cheryl and Orca, and the term is just beginning, so there'll be more days like this ahead. Orca's the first thing that I see when I get up in the morning, and he's the last thing that I see when I go to bed at night. He's always there for me, and I love him to pieces. I wouldn't have it any other way. Target, a six-year-old Brittany Spaniel, has an eye and nose for game birds. He loves pointing them out for his owner, Reja Hua. Yes, good boy, yeah. Watch. The two survey grouse populations for the Quebec Department of Wildlife. Without Target, the local grouse population could be overhunted. But with his help, when a search turns up few birds, the area is declared off limits to hunters so the population can regenerate. Brittany spaniels originated in France. These bird dogs have great stamina and retrieve both on land and in water. Rejean has eight Brittanys. He breeds hunting and show dogs. Today, Target and Reja will inventory grouse at a provincial woodland. Reja learned early on to keep Target in his kennel while he gets ready. Let's say I get things ready Saturday night to take him hunting Sunday morning. If he sees the gear, he won't go to sleep. He'll stay up all night. He just can't wait for the morning. I have to wait till he's asleep in the other room with the door closed so he can't see me. Target, stop! Target just can't help himself. Target! I have to do it out of his sight. It's the only solution. Target's training was aimed at awakening his natural bird dog instincts. Reja is training this pup the same way. It'll take three years. Right now, she's learning to be steady when she points, because she points well, but she anticipates too much. So we're teaching her to be patient. It looks like Target might soon have some competition for top bird dog. We use the wing to develop the puppy's skills. The wing introduces them to the bird scent, and they learn to be steady and solid on point. Good girl, we see. Beau, so. Oui, good girl. Rest. She's learning to be patient. She's wonderful. She's almost in a trance. She has a lot of natural talent. That's what we look for in this kind of dog. So her job in the woods is to point and hold the bird. Now look, she's raising her paw. She's in the flow. She's really patient. Good girl. Target is Rejean's top bird dog, but he still needs to train regularly. A dog is like an athlete. You have to train him every day. If you don't train him every day, he won't stay in shape. An athlete can't stop training. The same thing for a hunting dog. Target and Rejean are searching for grouse. Rejean will report on the number and location of any birds or eggs they find. The terrain is challenging, but Brittany Spaniels are built to work in difficult conditions. 
their short, sleek coats and crop tails don't get caught in the brush, and their loose skin isn't easily pierced. With skin like this, the brambles and thorns can't hurt him. He's the kind of dog that can walk through anything. A hunter and his dog are supposed to stay very close, as if they shared an imaginary bubble. Target wears a bell so that Rejan will hear when he stops to point. But sometimes, Target runs out of hearing range. This is a problem. The most difficult thing for Target is to stay in the bubble. When we hunt together, we have to work in a radius of 50 to 75 feet. But sometimes he gets too excited and runs out of the bubble and starts working 75 to 100 feet away from me. For us to be a good team, he has to stay close to me. Target hunts with his nose in the air. When he's closer to the scent, he slows down. Without seeing the bird, Target freezes and points from 5 to 10 feet away. That's close enough to make the bird freeze at the sight of him, but not so close that the bird will be scared and fly off. During a hunt, Target would also flush and retrieve the bird. But during these surveys, he has to endure hunting interruptus. It's hard because when we're hunting, the dog will point and hold the bird. We shoot it, and his reward is to find and retrieve it. So when we're on photo safari, he's thinking, yeah, all right, I found it, we're taking a picture. But then he'd like to retrieve the bird, and he can't. Réjean and Target have found enough grouse here over the past two weeks to know that hunting won't endanger the species. But they'll be back to check again before the next hunting season. After a hard day's work, Target and Réjean refuel. My relationship with my dog is a love story. We work a lot, but we have a relationship. He's like my best buddy. We're very close. We're in love. My wife is jealous. You love me, don't you? Yes, you love me.